Good afternoon. Well, this is day three of my enforced lockdown because of obviously, well, we're not labour on that, shall we? I'm sure we've all heard more than enough about that for the time being. And I need to do some photography. So I've set up in the conservatory, which is why the lighting is pretty damned awful. And I'm having to go to some flower photography. But not typical flower photography. Um, this is more about the processing. Um, there is a bit of a craze at the moment and I'm hooked, completely hooked. I thought well, it's a fun way to learn different post-processing techniques and if I come up with some that I really like, and I've already got I think three that I really like, then I will get them printed onto acrylic. I think acrylic they will look absolutely stunning. They're a bit sort of psychedelic. Um, I hope you guys are all doing all, all right where you are and you're not suffering. So this isn't what you're used to. I've walked the heady distance of my front door <laughs> to my conservatory, which is about 20 foot. So I'll show you what we're doing. If you just give me a second to relocate the camera and everything. It's a very simple setup. I, back in the days when I used to do a lot of kind of macro and indoor photography, I bought loads of black sheets of card from Hobbycraft. Obviously, other craft shops are available. And I've stuck one on the window and one on the table. I'm concentrating on the head and a small amount of the stem of the flower. And it's a gerbera, and I love gerberas. They're gorgeous flowers to photograph. There's so much texture and color and there's shapes in there. Absolutely wonderful. I've got the macro lens out, which is a Tamron 90 mil. You could do this with a normal 17 to 55 lens, with any lens really. Now say, the idea behind the shooting these is to turn them into something completely different in post-processing post, post even. Now, camera settings wise, just give me a second and I'll tell you what we've got. Right, you should be able to make that out. So I've got 1 25th of a second, I'm on F9, ISO 100. Um, minus 1.3 compensation because I'm shooting on aperture priority and yeah 90 mil as I say and that is the image I've got. I took a one or two closer up so I'm now going to put my white background up, pop my white piece of board up and I have f9 1 13th of a second I'm on ISO 100. It's as bright as I can get the background. There is a slight blue tinge to the background because I am on 4350 Kelvins, but I think that will work. So let's so it's on mirror up. Yeah, right, I'm going to stop waffling. I'm going to go and jump into Photoshop. See you there. And here we are, Photoshop. No, I'm not the world's best Photoshopper. I try. I struggle to learn, but I'm trying. Now, I followed two or three videos to do this, and I'll pop the links below so that there is more stuff that you can do that I don't do on this basic one. I'm, it's not going to be quick, but I'm going to try and make it as quick as I can. So I've got Bridge open. These are the images that I took this morning. I took some with a black background and some with a white background. So we're going to try the black one and we'll try that white one. Uh, in fact, we'll try one with the head and one with the stalk. So we'll just pop those into Photoshop. The first thing that opens up for me is Adobe Camera Raw, which is a scaled down version of Lightroom. I don't like Lightroom. I can't get on with it. So Adobe Camera Raw does fine for me. I'm not going to do any editing at all in that. I'm just going to pop them straight into Photoshop. And for those of you that normally watch me out in the countryside, at the seaside, whatever, doing um, on location stuff, this might not really be your cup of tea, but you might be interested in the sort of thing we get up to, to give you an end result. Now, as I said, this is not going to resemble this flower in any way, shape or form. What I have discovered is it's pretty impossible to do the same thing twice. But I'm going to have a go because I know how this one should turn out. So over in my layers 
panel over here I've got a background which I'm just going to duplicate I'm going to unlock it I might want to brush this through at the end I'm not sure yet click onto the background copy go to the filter menu drop down pixelate mezzotint mine automatically defaults to fine dots but I want it on long strokes you can use any of them long strokes short strokes medium strokes but I found that the long strokes works best for me then I will click on background copy and convert it to a smart object. You can see that the long line, uh, the, the effect that that has had on the image, it's sort of got snow on it. So we've now got a smart object. We go back up to filter and we go down to blur and we go to radial blur. And we want the settings at 100 sure that will go to 100 get up to 100 we go to zoom and good is fine that's more than sufficient so we let that run through because this is such a big file it can take 30 seconds or so for the images to render and you can see immediately that all the lines have disappeared and we've got a lovely texture on that stem and we've got some streaks coming off the flower head now we want to do this two or three times. If you go back into filter, radial blur will be at the very top because you've just used it. Click it again. The settings should have stayed the same. Good, zoom and 100. And you'll see it makes a very slight difference. Eventually, talk amongst yourselves. It very slightly extended the lines that the petals are making I'm going to do it once more you can do it twice you can do it three times you could do it five times I'm guessing it really is a case of playing this is such good fun I am completely addicted doing this right so that's three times and I think we'll be okay there so next is the bit of magic we go to filter we go to distort and we go to twirl hence the title of the video in the, in the dialog box for twirl Click on the minus sign and it will drop back so you can see what's happening. And it might automatically defaults at 50 and you can see it's had a bit of an effect there. But we want that at 100, so key in 100. And I actually quite like that as a standalone image. I think it's quite a nice abstract. Uh, would look good printed on acrylic, I think, something really high gloss. But we're not going to stop there, we're going to... Go back over to the layers, pa uh, layers menu, right click on twirl and that will open up a dialog box and you click on edit smart filter blending options. Now this generally takes a little bit longer with this PC. There is a way of doing this where you can create a second layer, you can downside, downscale that layer, carry out the process and then upscale it so that you can print it. I haven't quite got my head around that bit yet, but one of the videos that I'll link to below will show you that part of the process. Right, so we get another, another dialog box up. Click on the minus magnifying glass, and then click on mode, and it will drop down from normal and all your blending options turn up. There are three common ones that you use. Lighten, which I love because I know it gives me that curve around there. You can use lighten, lighter colour, which does very often do strange things to the really brightest parts of the image. And then you go to pin light, mm, not so keen on pin light, but any of them you can use. And it's fun just scrolling through. Ooh, that's definitely a bit psychedelic and seeing what you get. Some of them are obviously not a huge amount of use, but I think I am going to stick with, where is it, lighter, oh, let's drop that down, lighten, because I like that. From there, you then do filter, distort again, back to twirl. Now we had 100 in there for the first twirl. Now we want to put a minus sign in and do minus 100. And you can see it flips the image round. Go back again to the 
second, the topmost twirl. Blending options. I'll speed this bit up. All right, there we go. So we're about there. Get the same dialog box up. I'm going to go for the same blend mode, lighten. And hey presto, and that's what I was after getting. So that's fine. That's all I wanting. From there, you can go into at the bottom your adjustments panel and you can adjust your levels you can adjust anything you want i'm not so keen on using the adjustment if you bring that up you bring up all the shapes and patterns behind it but we don't want to do that so we'll put that back where it was i'm not so keen on using these i prefer to collapse the image and go into ACR again just to finish off with a couple of little tweaks. But to me, that's still recognisable as a flower, but it's a little bit different. Now, there is one other thing you can do, which I'm going to have a go at. We'll go click back. Because I put levels in, I'm going to just delete that because I really didn't worry about the, the levels at all. Click on your background copy and then you should be able to press Alt, Control, Shift, and E. So Alt, Control, Shift and E. That brings you up a layer that has no smart filters on. And what we're going to do with that is edit, transform, Ooh, I think we'll go for flip horizontal. Click on your blending modes, normal, and darken. And you get a completely different image. No, I'm just sorry, I just ran through a couple of them and I think that's amazing. They kind of look like stained glass. But then you can go down. Again, I really like the look of that. That's so symmetrical. Using the Alt, Control, Shift and E to give yourself a duplicate layer and then transforming that by flipping it vertically or horizontally can give you some wonderful results. I really like that. I'm going to leave it like that. So at that point, I'm just going to flatten the image. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go back up to my filter menu. I'm going to go back into ACR. And I'm just going to tweak it slightly. To give the blacks a bit more depth. Give it a tweak of dehaze, not too much. And if I zoom in, the texture button Sorry, not button slider. You can just see it's bringing out some of the wonderful shapes. It's very subtle. And likewise with clarity. Very, very subtle. Let's fit that in view. I quite like that. I think I'm going to take the dehaze off a little bit. Because it's just blocking too much of that colour. You can then go into your colours palette. Oh, saturation. In fact, go to hue. I'd like that yellow to be a bit more green. Not too much. That's yeah, I think I quite like that one. Might turn it down a little bit. The saturation. And drop the red. Not too much. That's better. Just enough that it helps to bring out the detail in there. I'll go back into start so if we go into texture I don't want to ramp it all the way up to a hundred but I'm thinking somewhere around ooh, 34 a little bit more yeah quite like that clarity yeah we'll leave that where we were oh that's too far Oh, no, that's dehaze I've grabbed for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, I think that'll do quite nicely. Fit in view. Yeah, that. Dehaze. Clarity, there we go. And I'm quite happy with that from what it started out as. I think that's lovely. So I'm just going to file. Obviously, I've done a few of these. Hmm. As in, I am completely addicted and can't stop. I've actually got some printed. I'll just save it on 
edit three forty A. But now we need to do three forty B because I've already played with it. We'll do that, save that, save that as large. Now I'm kind of thinking that would look good as a square crop. So we'll do square crop. It's central as it can be. Hit that. There we go. Yep, I'm quite liking it. I'm not even going to bother to sharpen it. I really don't think you need to. I'm then going to go file new. Because I want to put a frame on it. And um, this computer doesn't have my frame set up. My standard frame. So I'm just going to put a cheeky little frame on it. If I can get this thing to wake up. There we go. It's sprung into life. Slowly but surely. I say because I am working on a huge file. And I want square. So I'm going to go custom 9 by 9 And... In the colour mode, I want it as RGB, which I'm hoping it's going to let me change. Yeah, I want it on RGB colour. If I put it in CYMK or whatever it is, it changes the colour of the image I put into it to match. I've got it as white, 9 9 so I'm squared. Create that, which it'll do in a minute. There we go. Right, so then we go back to the original image, and we go select or edit. Edit, copy, back into the white one, edit, oh, and paste. Now it's considerably bigger, so if you just go into image, reveal all, that will let Photoshop put the whole image on your blank document. Edit, mm, free transform, mm, just move that in slightly. That looks about square, so then we'll do that. Then I'll go down into effects, drop shadow. As I say, this isn't my normal framing, so I might have to do a bit of jiggery pokery. It's a very faint. If I darken it down, you can see it coming up. I actually quite like that one. Click that. And then flatten that. And there we have it, the finished article. So I can now get rid of that. And I can get rid of that. And just to show you really quickly, we've got white. So we'll have a go at that. I'm doing it slightly differently. I'm unlocking the bottom layer, converting it to a smart object, and then going into the filter menu. Pixelate, mezzotint. It's already on long strokes. We'll try one with medium strokes. Just to show you there's a little bit of a difference, but not a lot. Blur, radial blur, that's all set as it was before. Oh, I've not done this one, so I've no idea what to expect. We'll do radial blur again. I'll just do it twice just to speed it up. That's looking really nice. Lots of nice soft lines. The idea behind the radial blur is it softens everything out. So then we'll go filter, distort, whoops, an easy twirl. We're on minus 100, that's all right, that saved it from last time. I've actually sent off to have six of my images that I've done so far printed. And I print going for acrylic, only small ones. Zoom that out so we can see what we've got. And we'll start off with lighten. No, not so keen on that. Lighter colour, no, not so keen on that. So let's go pin light. No, darken. Dark and yeah, I quite like that. Quick flip down to oh, actually, I'm kind of quite liking that. And the problem is, every time you do it, you go oh, actually, that looks really nice. Let's do something different. Oh, I say that's a bit Larry, isn't it? That I like. Difference using the blending mode of difference. So we'll go back in. We'll do distort. We'll do twirl, and we'll just put in 100 instead of minus 100. And then we'll twirl it again with the blending options. But we're getting there. That's it. So let's just zoom out on that. I can't remember which one I wanted to use. It's exclusion. Now that's a completely different look. So I'm going to settle with that. And then I am going to... We could have some real fun here, so we'll go on there. We'll go Alt, Control, Shift, and E. 
Lord knows what happened when you flip this one. So into your edit file, sorry, into your edit menu, transform, flip horizontal, and then into your blend modes over here, do darken. Oh, I say. Now that really is a bit, um, it looks like a, a kaleidoscope. Now you can see there that we've got the mirroring and I think that is lovely. We're on the linear colour. Yeah, quite like that. It would help if I wasn't so flipping indecisive. I actually quite like that because the colours have changed altogether. We've gone more towards the blues, that one. So we'll live with that one and we'll flatten the image. A quick whiles into ACR. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot. Sweep the highlights down a little bit. Dehaze smidge. Making and it is. Clarity. I'm not six on the texture slider. Go into the colours. You can change whatever you want. I think we'll like that. So we'll go back there, then we'll click OK, take that back into Photoshop. And then, with a little bit of luck, I just want to get rid of those two bits at the side. So we'll just get rid of those. Just using clone, that's fine. That's it, I'm going to leave it at that. So there you go. A little bit different. Hope you enjoyed it. For those of you who've got Photoshop, I hope you found it helpful. And next weekend, we are back on the Isle of Man from the end of February, or the middle of February. Seems like a lifetime ago. But yes, we'll be back in the great outdoors, probably getting rained on and blown to pieces. Thanks for watching. See you soon.